In this video, we're taking a look at two Chinese medicine cookbooks. These are books that you might use for yourself, you might recommend to your patients, or you might just have them sitting out on your waiting room table for people to flip through before their appointment. So let's go ahead and take a look inside each one and see how they compare. This first one is The Five Elements Cookbook by Zoe Xinyi Gong. And this is a really well put together book it's hardcover, and it has lots of really great photographs, both of Chinese herbs and of the finished dishes. So if nothing else, it's really fun to just flip through and look at the pictures. So it starts out with a basic primer on TCM. It goes through the theory of yin and yang, the five vital substances, the six environmental qi, some basics on the channels and the organs, the five phases, the four temperatures, and the directions of herbs. So if you have a patient who's interested in learning more about TCM and what's going on in their treatment, this can give them a good introduction. It then goes on to talk about eating with the seasons and a few different constitutional types and some dietary recommendations that go along with each. So I could see this as something where you sit down with your patient and you say to them, based on your tongue and your pulse and the condition that you're dealing with, this is your constitutional type. And then you could go through and circle some of the recommendations on what types of food to eat, what to avoid, and maybe even highlight some recipes they could try with those ingredients. After that, it goes through about 50 common Chinese herbs that are used in cooking. And again, it has really nice color photographs, so it's fun to just flip through and look at the pictures. And the ones listed here are medicinal herbs, like what you would find in your Bensky's Materia Medica, but they're also common enough that you can find them in most Asian supermarkets, either in the fresh produce section, or they usually have one aisle where there's all these different types of tea on one side, and then a lot of these common medicinal herbs used for cooking on the other. So it's not like you have to go specifically to an herbal pharmacy to find these ingredients. And it's also nice because each entry has the Chinese characters that go along with it. So I could see someone taking this book with them into an Asian grocery store and then asking someone, hey, where do I find this? And then you can show them the Chinese characters to make sure that you're getting the right thing. After that, it gets into the actual recipes. And it's kind of weird. I don't think there's an actual list of recipes, like a list of recipe titles in the table of contents but I guess you're just supposed to flip through and see what looks good. Again, it has really nice color photographs and it lists the ingredients with precise measurements followed by step-by-step -step instructions. And this is really nice because I don't know if you've ever seen traditional recipes, but it's often like, add a small amount of sugar. And you might be like, how much is a small amount? Is it a pinch? Is it half a teaspoon? Is it three tablespoons? So Americans or Westerners like to be really precise, especially if they don't have a lot of experience with cooking or with a particular type of cuisine. So this one has those exact measurements, making it really user friendly. And then it finishes out with a table of TCM properties of common foods. And these are more like actual foods, not just the medicinal herbs that we saw in the first section. So that's the Five Elements Cookbook, really well put together, beautiful photographs, and it's fun to flip through. The other one we have is Ancient Wisdom Modern Kitchen. Now with this one, I have to admit, I have some bias because the authors of this book were teachers at my school, and I actually had Warren Shear on the podcast a while ago, but I really like this book. So it was published back in 2010, so it's not as fancy as the other one. It's paperback, and it doesn't have as many photos, and the ones it does have are in black and white, but I still really like this book. So it starts out in a similar manner, giving us an overview of TCM or Chinese medicine in a nutshell, talking about yin and yang, vital substances, the five organs, the six evils, the tastes and the seasons, and then some modern research on some of these traditional ingredients. And then similar to the last one, it has a TCM breakdown of some common ingredients. So here we have 100 healthful Asian ingredients. And this one doesn't have those nice color photographs that the other book has, but I like this one because it doesn't just have the medicinal herbs that we would learn in an herbology class. It also has some more common ones like 
kiwi fruit or rock sugar. It also breaks down different types of mushrooms, different types of seaweed, and the different types of tea. So these entries are a little bit shorter, but there's a lot more of them. After that, we get into the actual recipes. And this one does have a list of all the recipes in the table of contents. So I think it's a little bit easier to look through and find what you want. And something that Warren told me was, one of the major goals of this book was to make recipes that were accessible and easy to follow for a Western audience. So again, we have lists of ingredients with precise measurements and step-by-step -step directions, which is not necessarily common to find with recipes that have been handed down through a family or even in traditional Asian cookbooks that were being published at the time. So they did a lot of testing of these recipes to make sure that people who had never seen this before or haven't done a lot of Asian cooking could still follow the recipes and have it turn out right. And again, it doesn't really have any photographs of the finished dishes, but I do really like these little blurbs that go along with each recipe, things like helpful hints about lotus root or legend has it, or my favorite are the Yuan Says boxes, where she often talks about recommendations she makes to her patients who are dealing with certain conditions. And then at the very end, it has a glossary of TCM terms like B syndrome or restless organ disorder. And it doesn't have those constitutional dietary recommendations like the other book has, but it does have recipes for common health concerns. So this might be another thing where you would go through it with your patient and say, here are some things you could make for cold hands and feet, or here are some home remedies for a wind cold attack. So which one of these books should you get? Well, honestly, they're not that expensive, so just go ahead and get both. But the Five Elements cookbook, I really like for the pictures and the way it's put together. This is something that you should have on your waiting room table so people can flip through it while they wait for their appointment. And I really like the explanations at the beginning. A lot of times I've had friends, family, or even patients who wanted to know more about Chinese medicine, and I would usually tell them to go read the book The Web That Has No Weaver by Ted Kapchuk. But honestly, that book is kind of long. But with this one, even if you're a student and your family is like, what's this Chinese medicine stuff all about? This is a book you can give them and it will give them an introduction to some of the basic ideas about Chinese medicine. But when it comes to the actual recipes, I actually like Ancient Wisdom Modern Kitchen a little bit better. First of all, it just has more recipes. Like the Five Elements Cookbook has around 55 recipes. I think when you get to the main dishes section, there's only like eight of them. Whereas Ancient Wisdom Modern Kitchen has over 150 recipes. And a lot of these are things that I think I would be more likely to make on a regular basis. Like, I'm not sure how often I'd want to steam a whole fish, but things like silver wrapped chicken or shrimp stir fry with asparagus and goji berries are easy weeknight meals that I would make on a regular basis. Or even as I was writing this out, I've been trying to get rid of this greasy yellow tongue coat that I have, and I came across this recipe for hangover soup with mung beans and seaweed. And here, Yuan tells this story about how she recommended this recipe to a patient who was a heavy drinker, and after a while of taking this soup, she was actually no longer able to tell if the patient had been drinking just by looking at his tongue. So this is an example of a really easy recipe I can make, and it's something I can do as food therapy in addition to the herbal formula that I'm taking. So go ahead and get both. Like I said, they're really good to have on your waiting room table. They're really good to give to your patients or get a bunch wholesale and sell them in your clinic. And it's something that you can sit down with your patient and highlight certain things that apply to their specific situation. You can give them homework and then they have something physical to take home with them. And they're also really good for gifts. I did this one year when I was in school. Uh, I got a copy for my parents and then I got them some of the common ingredients like lotus seed and perilla leaf that they might not be able to find in their local grocery store. And that was their Christmas gift for that year. But that's it for this one. I'll put some links down below if you want to buy either of these or both of these. 
but I hope you enjoyed this review. We'll see you next time. Hey, it's Future Me. It turns out that after I recorded this video, I came across another TCM cookbook. This one's called Nutritional Healing with Chinese Medicine. And this one has over 175 recipes in it. So it starts out kind of the same as the other books. It has an overview of TCM theory, and then it goes over some of the basic properties of certain foods and common ingredients. It does have a lot of recipes in it, but again, this one doesn't have those beautiful color photos like we saw in the first one. But one thing that does make it different is it organizes the recipes according to season. So if you, for example, if it's winter and you wanna do some winter cooking, you can flip to the section with the winter recipes. So it does have a few more recipes and it has different recipes, but I don't know, I'm still kind of biased towards ancient wisdom, modern kitchen. I feel like it just has a little bit more character because it has those cute boxes with the practitioner stories and things like that. So I'm still biased towards this one, but I'll go ahead and put a link to this below as well in case you wanna check it out.